Paul Childerly hits the spot on a driven hunt in Germany. Kayat Bryn is stalking the south of England in the new Hunt and Cook. Ever so Christmassy, isn't it? We've got news, we've got hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Every year since 2012, the world's hunting journalists, media creators, influencers, call them what you will, gather in Germany for the Zeiss Media Hunt. It's a two-day feast of festive orange and driven big game shooting with all the pomp and oompa oompa of German hunting tradition. This year, Paul Childerly is in the hot seat for GB, armed with Zauer 404 Hornady ammo and, crucially, the Zeiss V8 in 1.8 14x50, a classic dual-purpose stalking and driven hunting rifle scope. Here shown in action on the range on the day before the two-day hunt. So, Paul, we know it works. Yeah, slightly happy, relieved, a little bit uh, shaken actually, because he was going full, full tilt. I think his adrenaline was up and uh, took some serious stopping. Obviously there might have been one miss. You didn't drop your boiled sweet, I noticed. No, no, no. Priorities, priorities, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, Mufon come through. I'm not sure if it was a male or a female, but didn't have no horns. And uh, the next minute, a pair of reasonable sized um, boar come right through there. And they were looking, they were, obviously they're older ones, because they were looking, they are running, looking, running, looking. And um, again, the first one was a little bit of a miss, clear miss. And, um, and the second one eventually got onto it and pulled me out together and got a good strike. So you've been beating yourself up a bit? I've been, yes, I've been crying a little bit on the first one. On, on the inside? Crying on the inside? Crying on the inside, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or blaming somebody else. Oh yeah, no, that's, that's, that's one of the reasons I'm here. Yes, yeah, good, yeah. good, good, thank you. As long as we know that. <laughs> Now, you may think that the boar in the ride was a possible hit. After the drive, we go carefully over the ground and we find no sign. Uh, basically, we're just doing the follow-up um, every shot. You mark the spot, the position, go and check. It's quite good with, with these leads and stuff. Even though there's, there's, uh, it's pouring with rain, you can still see the scuff marks. And uh, you're not just looking for blood and bits and pieces. You're seeing how the animals reacted afterwards, whether it's, if it's good on its feet, if it's heavy on its feet. Um, yeah, which gives you indication, obviously, in which way to go to... Does the to, rain help, or is that a problem? Uh, it, it hinders, really, because obviously if there's any specks of blood, um, it washes them off. Um, some of these big boar, um, you know, they, they take the shots incredibly well and there's not much exit. Um, so, of course, they'll run on and they won't, they won't bleed out at all, so there'll be no, no, nothing to trace, nothing to track. So that's when, obviously, a dog comes in to its own. Back to the drive and missing that boar is having an effect on Paul. Worse is to come, his missing woes are not over. I can't even see a boar in this shot. Maybe he was hallucinating. But then we see a sow and a sounder of piglets hole up in the brambles in front of our position. The beaters locate them and flush them. Yeah, basically come in the top corner into this thick area here. And uh, yeah, that rain come down and they just stuck right in the middle there. Just waited poised until these guys come in and pushed it through. And of course, it's quite funny, they, they sit so tight and then the dogs go in and then it's like, they sort of semi like charge at the, the beaters and then the beaters like have to erupt because otherwise they're going to get charged by the boar and then they erupt out and then we have to try and do work our magic, which is quite difficult today because everything's... How, how is the old magic? It's, it's uh, room for improvement, but they are going like, Think. Oh my god, they're like flat out, everything's flat out today. But none of this trickling through gently. It's everything's full pout, full uh, just in just in here. Yeah. 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 A successful day after all and Paul gathers up and Gralix his Rodo and his boar. Plus there's still day two to look forward to. The hunt staff lay out the game and everyone who has shot an animal receives a fur frond to put in his or her hat. Or hair if you have a man bun. 
we find out how well everyone else has shot and it's a chance to catch up on the kit we're using. Uh, what I'm currently holding in my hand is the Sauer 404 XTA. Um, XTA means that it has an adjustable cheek piece and this is especially uh, a big advantage when you're on a driven hunt. So you have the classic pistol grip, you're very quick in reloading as you have probably seen but most importantly you're in one line with your scope, you can align it so as soon as you feel the contact towards the adjustable cheek piece you're spot on and this guarantees you there that you're really quickly on the target quick shooting as you have seen here this is really necessary for the driven hunt the 404 has the huge advantage that it has a cocking system a hand cocking system so this is a very safe mode there is no uh, cocked firing spring now inside so um, it's it's a yeah the safest safety system you can actually have but nevertheless it's ergonomically perfectly placed so you can just slide it forward red dot indicates you're on fire you can uncock it and you're in safe mode again and um, very simple but very safe now while the british bang on about brexit and the french are setting fire to their country for germans the big problem in their immediate future is african swine fever one of the shooters here dr nina kruger is a leading authority on the subject and she says it's about to hit germany and hit hard um, the latest on African swine fever is that it jumped um, about 1,200 kilometers um, from the last point in Eastern Europe to Belgium. Um, nobody really knows how it got there. There are different rumors. One of them is that um, Belgium soldiers bought it from the Baltics from a huge exercise um, that was happening there. Um, since it was first discovered on an army base, um, that is a likely scenario. Uh, the other idea that people have is that um, truckers might have brought it from the east. This is how the uh, disease might have jumped Germany and directly ended up in Belgium. Um, the short term risk is that it is coming this winter um, because uh, it's always brought to new areas by humans and um, especially Belgium has a lot of attention now, there are a lot of wild boar around it and um, when it was first discovered um, the cadavers were already four uh, to five weeks old so nobody knows how much spread already and um, if it reached other areas where people might have not discovered it yet and um, are still spreading it to other areas. So yes, it, could, it might be possible that we get it this winter. We will do the same um, as they did in Czech Republic and in Belgium now. We um, will establish a core zone that will be fenced and all wild pigs will be culled inside there. Um, in the surrounding risk areas um, there will be a ban of um, entering agriculture lands, um, forests, uh, stuff like that. And um, potential um, pig farms might be um, culled as well. Day two, and overnight Paul's misses and his ability to hit trees has earned him the nickname Chainsaw Childerly. Has he found his mojo? The answer, happily, is yes. By the end of the drive, he has four shots and four animals, including a red deer calf. Is there their uh, top of their hierarchy in the forest. Red deer comes first all the way down to the, to the uh, predator species, they call them. And uh, yeah, this is the first one, in, first one of the day for us. Nice long shot. Well, long shot. We uh, obviously had the scopes. We wound the scope up. It come around, went broadside, and took the shot. Happy days, cracking start. And what's your what's your personal hierarchy? Ah, boar, mouflon foxes. I loved. I, I get the excitement from the boar, driven boar, driven foxes because it's. They're coming, and the, the, the excitement is there, and the heart's going. Um, with a deer, you know, I'm always a bit cautious and trying to get exactly the right one. Like with the roe deer, we saw lots of roe deer, but yeah, I, don't, I don't need to shoot loads of it. As long as I shoot, yeah, shot the right one, I'm happy. So. And Paul shoots red roe, boar, and fox. Another roe come here, we left it, a little buck. Um, and then another drow doe come in. We sort of like weren't happy about that, and then all of a sudden, fox come through, shot that. Rodo come round, circle round, and shot that. Reloaded, and then dog started, then a bomb, and took a well, we didn't know what it was. Right the way through, full crawl around the bank, come round, and, and then a ball come straight up the bank, straight up to us, and uh, stopped. And all I could see was head and shoulders, so I shot it straight in the neck. So, ball down as well. So, 
four different species red, fox, roe and the mighty boar. Now you may notice that Paul is wearing camo with bright blaze orange all over it and you may well ask what's the point of that? Well we don't know a great deal about what deer and wild boar can see but science is fairly sure they can't see reds and oranges and that maybe blues are stronger for them. Here's Paul in his Shooter King jacket in mossy oak camo and me in the new Harkila camouflage pattern looking like lemons in front of trees. Let's muck around with the colours in this shot to try to replicate what the game animals can see. That was beechwood. This is Christmas tree. Now let's leave Paul cutting up his boar and see how the other shooters, all of them YouTubers, got on. Here is Christopher Clausen from Norway. It's actually, on, it's my third year and every year here I think I've shot a row on every stand. And also today I shot the row. I'm, I'm happy to shoot anything on a driven hunt, you know, it's just fun being, uh, being out and seeing some animals. And if I have the opportunity, I'll definitely shoot the row, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it looks like I'm calling it actually, but uh, I was standing in the tower and, um, and I saw a row coming and from behind me two dogs were coming and they sort of met up with the row. So luckily for me the row turned and did like a like half circle and came straight towards uh, my stand and stopped 15 meters in front of me. So that was a pretty easy shot, yeah. Uh, today's row, it, it, I heard a lot of noise for, from some dogs uh, and it was getting closer so I was ready and I could see a uh, row came alone running towards me full speed <clears throat> and it turned also straight in front of my tower and uh, yeah, well, yeah, well it didn't stop this time so I was lucky with the shot and, and got it and then all the dogs came uh, so it was sort of chased by the dogs, it was a bit exciting actually, yeah. Well, it has been brilliant uh, days here together with Size and uh, with you friends from Field Sports and everything. So it has been really, really marvelous. Uh, it was a wild boar who came uh, quite uh, sneaking, a sneaky wild boar. And then uh, uh, we could take a shot at it and it was running quite fast, but it was an interesting situation. Yeah. <laughs> And actually it was two shots, so first one shot, I was uh, uh, not 100% perfect, but the second shot was perfect. Yeah. Uh, Redder came very nice, calmly, stood still, easy shot. And uh, then we had one more red there uh, with a little bit more speed, and, uh, but uh, it was a uh, quite easy shot. I whistled uh, for the calf to stop and it stopped immediately and then we could take a shot. So, so like a highly trained deer? Yeah, yeah, very, very trained deer. Yeah. Like a dog? Yeah. Like... <laughs> today I got a young wild boar. Uh, the shot was, I mean, today we had a lot of rain coming down, we had a lot of wind in the tree, so it was hard hearing. And um, I hear them coming, I see them, and then I see them, spot them through the trees. It's a leading sow with two young wild boars behind it. And then they stop at 40 metres. And um, um, I've got the scope on it, got the video camera going, and uh, drop it on the spot. So, yeah, no, it was really, really good. Like the British, the Norwegian finds this kind of shooting different to what he's used to in his own country. Not definitely not uh, like this, like big driven hunts with lots and lots of people. We have like drives, you know, we can have uh, five, six or ten people and you have one or two guys walking with dogs, but it's, it's nothing like this actually. So I, I, I like the German culture of this. I've been doing it in, in, Germ in, in Poland and Hungary as well. But this kind of hunt we do here is, uh, you know, the Germans, they, they have um, control. I mean, they're, they're good and also... Yeah, so I like it. Yeah, we do a lot of driven big game hunting in Sweden. Actually, that's one of the most common uh, ways for uh, do big game hunting. Moose, wild boar, red deer, fallow deer, everything. You always uh, aim for having it standing still, 40 meters, perfect everything. But yeah, uh, especially since we got more and more wild boars, uh, the, the shooters has been uh, practicing more and been better and better in shooting in, uh, in running animals as well. Yeah. As ever, a magnificent couple of days and more than a hundred animals off to the game dealer. Seven of them from, well, the newly renamed Paul One Bullet One Animal Childerly. Thanks a million to Zeiss, whose fabulous products you will find at Zeiss.com. <laughs>
thank you to Zeiss for that. It was an excellent few days, and thank you to Paul. Good shooting. Now for more pigs in more pokes, it is the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Hunt saboteurs may have chased a foxhound onto a busy road where it was hit by a car and killed. The Fitzwilliam Hunt was trying to turn hounds back from the A14 dual carriageway. However, footage shot by the Cambridge saboteurs shows them chasing the hound onto the road where they filmed it being killed by a car and then released the film to news agencies blaming the hunt. Hunt staff can be seen desperately trying to turn the hound back from the road. The PR stunt by the Antis has ended with the death of a hound and has led to Hunt staff considering wearing cameras so they can show extreme sab action like this in the future. A Green member of the Scottish Parliament admits that the ban on hunting with hounds is unworkable. Alison Johnston, MSP, plans to tighten laws, but she has not said how. Her announcement follows the trial of Timothy Allen and Sean Anderson from the Buccleuch Hunt, where they were cleared this week of deliberately hunting a fox with a pack of hounds. In the 16 years since its introduction, there has only been one successful prosecution in Scotland involving a mounted hunt. Chris Packham's Revive Group has struck its first blow against Scottish grouse shooting, and it's left legislators a little puzzled. Revive's new report, Back to Life, says that grouse shooting produces just £30 per hectare. The organisation backed by the TV naturalist says that if Scotland's grouse moors were turned into housing or horticulture, they would make much more profitable £12,000 per hectare. However, even MSPs have rejected Packham's plan to zone Scotland's uplands for greenhouses and flats. British air gun manufacturer Daystate are celebrating their 40th birthday. At a party at the Royal Armoury Museum in Leeds, it drew attention to the company's illustrious past, with 50 classic Daystate models on display, plus an 18th century Girandoni air rifle, the earliest example of PCP technology. Thousands of feral animals, including 4,750 pigs, have been eradicated in an aerial targeted shoot in New South Wales. Local land services, which coordinates the cull, estimates that the feral pig population in the western Riverina region could swell to 2 million within five years if uncontrolled. Aerial surveys over three years found numbers as high as 170 pigs per square kilometre. LLS Biosecurity and Emergency Services Manager Michael Lean says that the aerial shoot, which covered 750,000 hectares, killed up to 70% of the pig population thanks to Ken Payne for sending in the story. Saudi Arabia held its first falconry exhibition in its capital, Riyadh, this week. More than 250 exhibitors came from the kingdom and 20 other countries. The five-day event exhibition was organised by the Saudi Falcon Club in the area of the size of two football pitches, attracting 40,000 attendees. And finally, rangers in the USA are using social media to bust poachers. In West Virginia, until you have reported your deer on wvhunt.com, you could be committing an offence. West Virginia Division of National Resources Officers are now looking at local social media accounts. If they post a deer on Facebook but don't report it, they face a fine of up to $300 US dollars. You are now up to date with the Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Now, English deer stalking with Kayak Bryn and Hunt and Cook. In a car park somewhere in the southeast, Christmas has come early as our own hunt and cook chef Kai Atbrin is with Chris Dubry from Blaza Outfits. Chris is here to hand over quality Blaza cold weather clothing for Kai to take to Finland with him the following week. And this delivery has turned into an opportunity. So we've just seen two bucks. When Chris got here, and um, we thought we'd go for a quick spy because David was running late as usual. And uh, we got to the top field and had a look. Couldn't see anything. 
I said, hang on a second. I looked down at the bottom field and we saw two bucks, two, two cull bucks, and one had a really bad limp. And you were saying with the, you saw it with the binos? Yeah, I glanced him on the, uh, on the binos. He had, um, and it looked like his back right, back, right back leg had basically yeah. lost about six, eight inches off yeah, the Yeah, that's what I it. thought as well. Um, it looked like he'd been hit by a car. From, yeah. from from what you could see, and his it, antlers were a bit of a mess as well. So you're yeah. thinking, yeah, he's he's definitely had a an accident. So we've seen them, and they're kind of in the area, and where they've gone is surrounded by two roads. So it's like nearly four, half four now. So I can't imagine crossing that road at this time of day. So I think they're going to be confined in that area. We just need to get ourselves in a position for a safe shot for if yeah. we get in one. So I think we should get there now and uh, see if they're going to still be there. So if we go down here, yeah. we'll come round and then we'll yeah. very slowly have a look okay. and see if they're there. If they're not in that field, they could be in that little, small, tiny little wooden block. And if that doesn't work, we'll go up on the high seat. That's where, that's where plan B is. But in theory, depending on the height of the grass, we can actually see where they've been in the following field. What we can do is we run down these two bottom fields. They're gonna, they're gonna cross over there. They're cross over these bottom. Right, you saw those deer running. There's two ways they're gonna go. They're gonna come across this next field down here, or they're gonna go far away in the distance. If they go in the distance, then it, that's not our permission, so we've lost it. But if they come over the bottom of us here, we've got a really, really good chance of getting them. But it's exactly what we said was going to happen. Yeah. So they were going to be in that woodland block. We pushed them out. They ran across the field. and uh, But they they weren't stopping. They, no, they, they had a good... They, 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 they good, knew we were good, there. They were trotting on, weren't they? And you, know, with three legs. and you know what, they come out that corner that I told you to, that you were going to be at, so I mean that might have foiled it anyway, so. Right. Our three-legged deer is giving us the runaround, but they don't seem to be leaving the area. Plan B, let's sit it out for a while. We'll see how we get on up there. See if we can fit three of us up at night. It's quite wide. I mean, me and Chris should be able to get up there, right? I was going to say, have you seen the size of his ass? Yeah. Here is a pro field sports tip. If you want to know more about any shooting company's latest offering, ask them in a high seat while stalking. We find it keeps them from getting too loud and excited, and you get the facts. You don't have to shoot a blazer to wear the blazer kit, do you? No, absolutely not. What we found is that since bringing the clothing into the UK 18 months ago, finding a really good broad cross-section of, of the hunting fraternity buying the clothing. We've got a very nice lifestyle element to the collection, but equally very, very technical and absolutely fit for purpose product. We're certainly seeing our climate getting colder, um, certainly this last winter particularly. Equally, hunters are traveling more now. You know, they, they are also heading into Europe. They want the gear, our hybrid range, which is multi-layering, jackets where you can zip out the inner and then you're left with a shell so the onion principle of layering up is definitely a, an area that we're seeing the UK starting to get a little bit more of an understanding about there's a lot to be said for the traditional tweeds and loden fabrics that, that Germany has or some of the wonderful mills up in up in up in Scotland you know all that fabric works very well but actually what we are definitely seeing is a turn for people wanting much more multifunctional, less obvious clothing. You know, 
a lot of what we make, you know, we've had a lot of comments where people say, well, I can wear that playing golf as well as sitting in a high seat. Well, well, absolutely, why not? All this chatting isn't bringing the deer any closer, so we need to move. They are not that far away, and Chris has an opportunity. But with the fading light picking out the remarkably able damaged deer, he doesn't get the shot he wants, oh, and God. they move on. That's so frustrating. Yeah, but he's... he's yeah. Just didn't stop long enough for you to take yeah, that shot. Yeah, it was really. just, yeah. just that extra 10 second window of them just being static. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's, it's getting almost last night. There he is, he's getting last, last we can, light. We can check that other field down there and see how we get on. Down the bottom. Yeah, and then uh, maybe, maybe fingers crossed there'll be a group in there, but there was that one buck in there, and you, could only, you see only had one antler from what I could try yeah, to so see. Yes, his, his right was was intact, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah, this near side had gone. Yeah. Oh, so close. Uh, yeah, frustrating. <laughs> hey, that's stalking. Kai has a new winter wardrobe from Blaza and wants to gift back some festive deer. In a field on the way back to the pub, this is Last Chance Saloon. Last light again. <laughs> is that it? Yeah. There he is. Jeez. It's getting pretty dark, so we need to start <laughs> grallicking. Yeah. Grallicking oh, well this done. Piece. Well Thanks done, sir. Much, Chris. Yeah, it's great pleasure to be out with you. No, it's been a it's really, been a yeah, really good evening. Great, great experience. Let's get this done and go to the pub. Indeed. <laughs> Let's get on with it. Let's get dirty. If you would like to know more about clothing from Blaza Outfits, go to blazasporting.com. From the southeast corner of England to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, now it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Now, you may have enjoyed Tim Pilbeam's outing to Portugal after red stags. He went with Sergio Couto, who puts out this film, including Tim's trip, Hunting Iberian Red Stag 2018 in Portugal. EagleReview.com is pheasant shooting at Connaught Park in Hampshire. I shot there with its then owner, the late Paul Van Flissingen, and this film does the shoot tremendous justice. At the other end of the price list, the South Somerset ferreters are out once again ferreting, bolting, and catching rabbits. Brezniak shoots a couple of mini pigs in this film of him driven hunting in the Czech Republic. A Blaza R8 in 270 may seem like overkill, but you have to be prepared. B.O. Casa y Pesca is out with dog and gun in Spain after partridges. This is walked up birds, but in better weather than I'm used to. The American buck season went well for the Tag and Brag channel. On opening day of New York rifle season, he has a good animal walk right past him. Shooting from boats, Scout Look Weather interviews Mark Goldsworth about long-tailed duck from layout boats in Lake Michigan's Green Bay. He now builds his own layouts. And for Finally, what's better than a rat film? Corvid Hunter is air rifle hunting chicken farm rats. That's it for this week. I've put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the iSymbol top right or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, that is it for this week from a very wet Germany. Why don't you pop over to our website? You can click to like us there on Facebook and on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. Best of all, you can pop your email address into our register page and we'll contact you about this show. Field Sports Britain, even though it's from Germany, out 7pm UK time every Wednesday. Plus, you can go to fieldsportschannel.tv slash shares and you can back us. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing and goodbye. Goodbye.